Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. So today we will start to move further. So in the last few weeks since uh, the beginning of semester till so far, we are still mainly focus on the the fundamental phases related to the 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 carrier transport, some quantum mechanics, and discussing with the uh, equilibrium and non equilibrium case, and from uh, today's class till the end of this semester we start to move to the device level and uh, we will start to talk about the the PN junction and later we start to move to the MOSFET and in the end will be the BJT and also the JFET so we start to move in the part more related to the semiconductor device and we starting from the PN junction um, still it will be interesting to know that the, what actually the PN junction can benefit for the future understanding of the transistor especially related to the MOSFET so if you try to look at the structure of the MOSFET So I think so far everyone, even we haven't started to talk about the MOSFET yet, I think everyone is already quite familiar with the structure of the MOSFET. So we have a P substrate, we have the source and drain. We have the source and drain, which will be the N plus, N plus, and we have the dielectric. And on top of the dielectric, we have the gate electrode. <coughs> so that's a typical MOSFET structure. But uh, if you look in the MOSFET in the detail, you will find out that uh, one of the key components inside the MOSFET is actually also related to the PN junction. So if you look at right hand side, we have the P and N plus here. So this is a place where we also have the PN junction. And not only the one PN junction, actually in the most phase structure we have the two PN junction. So that's why when we first to look at the transistor to look at the device, we always starting from the PN junction because once we understand the PN junction, the basic structure related to PN junction, that can help us in the end to understand these two. So we have these two inside the MOSFET structure. And we also, in the end, we realize that the, these two PN junction will highly determine not only the main transport characteristic in the MOSFET but also lots of the parasitic effect in the MOSFET also will be influenced by these two PN junction. So the PN junction is very crucial. The structure is very simple but in the end the physics implications it's very useful for us. Okay, so that's a overview of our goal. Like in the end, we will definitely use the, the knowledge in the PN junction to our MOSFET structure. But still, we starting from the basic structure of PN junction. So when we look at the PN junction, it's a semiconductor material that we try to put the P type and the N type together. And in the interface between the P type and N type in this region, this is a region that we call as a PN junction. So 
That's why we will be very interesting in understand what happened in this interface. So, if you look at the concentration profile for the PN junction, we can plot the concentration profile as long with the x axis as shown me here, and to further illustrate the characteristic for the PN junction, we are preferring consider the left hand side which will be the p plus and right hand side will be the n so that would be a uh, uh, interesting more realistic case for the future because in reality is always not have the balance concentration between the p and n so in here we assume that the 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 p plus this is a pn junction that is a p plus versus a n here so if we have the p plus in the left hand side so that means our concentration in the p region which is n d uh, which is n a here because this is a p plus so that means we have the higher whole concentration in the p plus region compare to the the n region where the, we have the n d here and because this is also imply that the, this is a place full of the holes so the hole is a majority carrier here so that means this is place full of the hole and this is a place only the electron without the holes and by considering the basic diffusion concept the the major the carrier will try to diffuse from the high concentration region to the low concentration region so therefore we can expect the hole would like to diffuse to the right. So that is a hole diffusion. That's a hole diffusion, right? Because this is a region we have a lots of the holes. But this is region we don't have the holes so by considering the basic diffusion concept for sure the hole would like to move from left to the right in the meantime also this is a region we have the lots of the electron and this is a region there's no electrons and for sure the electrons will also prefer to diffuse from the right to the left. So that will cause the electron diffusion. So once we try to put the two pieces of the material that has a different concentration, then the first transport can be happen is definitely the diffusion so as mentioned in the text here majority carrier electrons in the n region will begin diffuse into the p region so the majority carrier here is electron will begin to diffuse to the left at the same time the majority carrier holes in the p region will begin diffuse into the N region, right? So the holes here will also prefer to diffuse to the right here. So that's the first things can be expected to be happen is once we put the P and N together and because of the concentration in this piece of material are not the same. So therefore the diffusion can be expected 
But the problem is that if there's only the diffusion can be happen after a certain while, no matter how long, in the end, it is possible that the whole fifty percent of the whole will diffuse to here. You we might have a fifty percent of the whole here and fifty percent hole in this region. At the same time, we have a fifty percent of the electron and fifty percent electron in the right and left, right? Because the diffusion will be only stop once the concentration reach to the equilibrium case. But if this is only the one mechanism, in the end, this is will become the neutral material, because in this sense, the electron will be equal to the whole, and this will back to the piece of the semiconductor material. Uh, that they don't have the n and p. There will be only intrinsic, which is n equal to p, right? If this is only the one. Uh, uh, mechanism that's related to diffusion can be happen, but in reality we found out that if you put a try, one p type and n type put together forever, this piece of the material will never become the intrinsic material will never become the material that has a equal n and p concentration, so that means the diffusion since. It's another only mechanism happen. There must be something happen. Try to stop the diffusion continues happen. So that's a, will be the slide we'll discuss in the next one. So right now, if we try to look at the charge distributions inside uh, this PN junction, we try to look at a little bit more detail related to the charge here. So still the same. We starting from the p and n here. So in the left hand side, which is a p. In the right hand side, is a n region. Um, we found out that as the electron diffuse from the n region to the from the right to the left, actually, we will have this is a uh, the interface here. This is a junction interface. Is here. So we found out once the electron diffuse from right to the left, and actually, there are some positive charge will be left in this region. So therefore, positively charged. Donors are left behind. So we have the positive recharge donors are left behind. That means we have the positive charge here. <coughs> This is because some part of electron is diffused from the right to the left. Since some part of electron is missing here, that for sure we will have some part of the positive charge will appears in this region. So similarly, as a whole diffuse. From the p region, and some of the negative charge acceptor atoms will disappear, will appear as well. So that means we have the holes diffused to the right, and some part of the holes disappear. So that means our electron, the negative charge, will appear in this region. So we have the negative charge will appears here. So this is a positive charge.
and this is negative negative charge and in this region is usually what we call the space charge region So this is what we call the space charge region. Sometimes we also call as a depletion region. And the negative positive charge and negative charge in the N and P region in the end will induce the electric field in the region near this junction and in the direction from positive to negative charge or from the N to P region. So because we have the positive charge here, we have a negative charge here and this positive and negative charge will induce an electric field. So this will induce electric field in the space charge region or in the depletion region. So that's a pretty important thesis. And because this induced electric field will start try to uh, will stop the diffusion happens. So that means the whole diffusion from the left and this electric field will stop the holes flow from the left to the right. Also, this electric field will stop the electrons diffusion. So that's the reason why in the end, the diffusion mechanism cannot continue to happen because after certain moment, we will start to induce the charge here this induced charge will create the electric field, try to stop the diffusion mechanism. So in the thermal equilibrium case, the diffusion and the diffusion force and the electric field force exactly balance each other. So that's why you will never see this PN junction become as a intrinsic material. So the P still the P, N still the N because this electric field will stop the diffusion and in the meantime there will be a space charge region or depletion region happen in this junction so this is understand understanding of this depletion region is a crucial part for us later to understand the pn junction and also is to understand the the current equation later. <coughs> of course, to further understand 
the mechanics inside, we won't use only use this simple schematic. We definitely need to use a band diagram to help us. So in the next one, we start to bring the band diagram, this kind of concept that try to help us to understand why the hole and electron will be stopped due to this internal induced electric field. So in this first case, we discuss with the uh, uh, zero applied bias here. So again, this is a typical PN, uh, PN junction schematic. So we have a typical PN junction schematic, which is P on the left and N in the right. So right now, we all know in the middle of these two junctions, there's a, a formation of this space charge region. And this is a space charge region. But right now we are trying to use the band diagram to understand what happened inside this space charge region. So from what we already know from the band diagram, if left hand side is a P type, that means if we try to plot the band diagram which we have the conduction band valence band ec ev here but right now because this is a p-type so that means our fermi energy our fermi level should close to our valence band so that's because this is a p-type semiconductor. And because this is under the zero bias, so that means our Fermi level, Fermi energy should be flat in the whole system. So the Fermi energy or the Fermi level will be the flat in the whole system because this right now is zero bias is in the uh, equilibrium case. So again, we just try to use our previous knowledge about band diagram. So right now we can try to plot the band diagram in the P region. In the same time, we can also try to plot the band diagram in the N region. And because this is N region, so that means our Fermi energy will close to our conduction band. And we're far away from our valence band. Okay, so that's a that's a theme here. So in the P and N, I think so far it's still very uh, straightforward because we just use the knowledge we have already learned uh, in the previous several lecture. We discussed a lot of the equation and uh, some equation to wellness is pre pretty complicated but the equation the point of using this equation is just try to support our physics understanding try to prove that our physics case our physics speculation is uh, correct so if right now we don't use those equation it's fine because we don't need those equation to really help us to understand we can use this simple band diagram. That's enough. And the key right now is to have the band diagram inside the space charge region, which is very simple. Because this is uh, in the same whole system here. So all the band, no matter for the conduction band or the valence band, it should be continuous. So once it can e, it should be continuous. That means we just simply try to connect this. 
That's enough. So that's the Venn diagram. Inside our space charge region, this is a Venn diagram inside our depletion region. So what we can see from this Venn diagram that tell us that inside the depletion region, we actually have this band bending. And also we can start to plot the intrinsic Fermi energy as well. So the intrinsic Fermi energy, which will ideally just in the middle of the EC and EV. So that will be here. That will be here. So this will be the EFI. And of course, again, this is in the same system. So the Fermi energy should be also continuous in the whole system. So that would be also the same continuous in the uh, space charge region as well. And right now, we can also try to use this schematic to understand why the electron hole cannot move for, forward to the right or to the left. So if you look at this region, this is N region. So that means we have the electrons here. And this is a P region. So that means we have the holes here. From this schematic, there's a barrier here. This barrier also suggests these electrons cannot move to the left because this is the barrier. In reality, we can consider this is kind of like the the the, the wall, or oh, but uh, in the uh, viewpoint of a uh, band diagram actually this is a potential barrier so that means unless this electron gets some additional energy otherwise this electron has a no chance to flow to the left because this additional barrier the same thing is also true for the hole as well so the holes in the beginning want to flow to the right, but however, they found that there's uh, barriers stop these holes flowing. So that's why the diffusion cannot happen anymore here. So also, I hope now you can see that uh, how powerful using the band diagram. Band diagram is a very simple tool but in the end, the physics concept, the mechanism can be easily understood from this band diagram figures. So again, just let me illustrate. So we have the majority carrier, which is are the electrons in this region. And in the beginning, the electron will try to diffuse to the left because of the diffusion mechanism. But right now, it is not possible because due to these additional barriers, this additional barrier will stop this electron diffusion. So the same things as a true for the hole. The hole cannot diffuse to the right because these small additional barriers as well. And also we can start to define several additional terms here. The first one is a difference between the intrinsic Fermi level and then the Fermi level here. So that's what we call the E5FP here. And also we can have the E5FN here. 
and also there's a term what we call as a building potential. So when we define the building potential, it means this is a energy barrier between this and this, and this is VBI here. So therefore, the building potential will be equal to E five F P plus E five F N here, right? So this one will be equal to this plus this here. So that's a very simple uh, mathematics here. So let's go through the text here. Let's no voltage apply across the PN junction. So therefore the PN junction is in the thermal equilibrium and the Fermi energy level is constant. throughout the whole entire system. So because this is under the case of the thermal equilibrium, so Fermi energy level is constant through the whole system. So that's why this is flat here. And electron in the conduction band of the N region sees a potential barrier in trying to move the conduction band of P region. So this sentence means that Electron here, C, there's a barrier here. And this potential barrier is referred to as a building potential barrier. And it's denoted by the VBR here. So this one is what we define as a building potential barrier, which denoted as a VBI. So therefore, the potential VBI remains uh, maintains equilibrium. So there's no current is produced by this voltage. So that's why uh, under zero bias you won't see any carrier flow in this PN junction. So the hole cannot flow to the right and the electron cannot flow to the left, which is because due to this building potential barrier will try to stop these carrier flows. So now we can start to understand the uh, more uh, further by using the band diagrams here. Of course, we will be interested to know how to further calculate it. How to further calculate the building potential. Since the building potential just equal to the 5FP and 5FM, and actually, we also already know how to calculate the 5P and 5M. So actually, the calculation for VBI is very simple. So first of all, the building voltage VBI is equal to 5FM plus 5FP, which is here these two plus together that will be equal to the building uh, potential here and we have the, already the sum of the the basic equation where this one we already show that the n zero will be equal to nc exponential minus this term over kt and also the n zero will be equal to ni exponential ef minus efi over kt and also in the last line we have defined the 
phi f n is equal to e phi e f i minus e f, and therefore this one become like this. And since right now we are considered in the n region, so that means our concentration of n zero is just equal to the concentration of the n type. So that's equal to the n d. So in the end, this equation will become like here. And which phi f n? Is uh, the one here? So similarly, we can have the phi f p here. So the phi f p is equal to this term, which is this one, and therefore the v b i. Is equal to this plus this. In the end, it's become V B I is equal to And also, in most of the case, we also will define this one as a VT. That's a usually what we just uh, replace this one as a VT natural log. Okay, so so far I believe this calculation are still very easy. It's a much less complicated in the uh last the the lecture in the several week before. This one is a very straightforward. Okay, so now we are we understand there's a. Building potential inside this space charge region, and for the engineer like us, for sure the next ones we will be interested to understand the electric field. So once you have the the voltage, you have the potential. Of course, the next turn is to understand how to further calculate the electric field. The calculation is also very simple. So, we starting from the very basic equation. That's what we call the Poisson equation. So, in the Poisson equation, the the is written in this way, where you have the second derivative of potential. Is equal to minus the charge over the dielectric constant. Also, is equal to the first derivative. Of electric field. So that's a typical, like the Poisson equation we use very often in the semiconductor uh, analytical calculation because we always starting, as you know, 
in the semiconductor, we mainly try to understand the the electron, try to understand the holes, and actually the electron and holes are the things we call a surcharge. So this is the charge. So therefore, once we understand the charge distribution, that's something we can calculate the electric field. And once we have electric field, we can again to derive the potential distribution. So these are the similar things. This is like a general rule in the semiconductor analysis. We always try to understand the charge and then we try to calculate the electric field. In the end, we calculate the potential distribution here. So in this slide, we starting from the charge distribution, and then we want to use the charge distribution to calculate the electric field distribution. And once we have the electric field distribution, we can start to derive the potential distributions here. So if again back to the schematic of our PN junction here. So we have the P and N here. I think you all know there's a space charge region, there's a depletion region in this PN junction. So that means we will have the positive charge here. In the meantime, we have the negative charge here. And right now, we define this space charge width with uh, xn and minus xp. So that's uh, xn plus xp, which will be the, our depletion width in this PN junction. So we're starting from here. Based on this schematic, we can further start to plot the charge distributions which is and because right now we can know there's a positive charge on the right so that means We have the positive charge on the right with the distance of xn. In the meantime, we have the negative charge on the left. And with the dis distance of the minus xp here because right now is uh, in the case without any bias so that means this is a case under the charge neutrality so therefore the total charge here will be equal to the charge here as well and this uh, charge distribution also related to the concentration whether this is ND and this is NA here. And right now, based on this distribution, we can start to have the boundary condition, which the rho x will be equal to minus ENA when x is in the region between 0 and xp. Also, the rho x is equal to end, which x is between xn and 0 
as well. So this is a boundary condition come from here, here. So now just a matter with this simple uh, high school integration. So we want to have this one, we just integrate this. So in the region of this one, we can have this equation out. In the region of this one, we have this equation out. And once consider the boundary condition, in the end, the electric field E is equal to minus E N D X on S bracket X N minus X. Also, the E is equal to minus E N A. over x on s x plus xp here so based on this e equation we can expect right now the electric field distribution should be look like in this way which is a uh, triangular as shown me here between the minus xp and xn so the electric field is also continuous at the junction so at the x equal to zero this term is valid So that actually means that uh, once we have the depression region here, in the end, this will induce a certain electric field. So an electric field is created in the depression region because of separation of positive and negative charge density here. So this is something consistent with previous analysis here in this slide we don't use any equation we just simply put the charge and simply use this schematic we already imagine we already imagine that there's a possible to have an electric field in this depression region and right now this speculation is proof by here as well. So this plot, this equation also proves that inside this depletion region, less uh, electric field. So that's the sense we starting from the chart distribution and we use a very simple uh like the one order integration so we can derive the electric field and we prove that the, uh is indeed inside this space charge region we have the electric field due to these positive and negative charges so the next for sure we will continue do the another integration again because we want to understand the potential distribution here so also uh, uh, this is something we already mentioned so we have this equation then right now we just do the integration again to derive the phi x and um, this is something we have already mentioned and right now our phi x is look like this way and look like in this way in the different region so right now if we try to plot the phi x
So it's still the same. We start him from the minus xp till positive xn. And based on this equation, tell us our potential distribution we look like this way. And also suggest that this value is equal to our building potential. So again, we use another way to prove that uh, inside this depression region, this depression region, this separation charge will induce electric field will have additional potential and these potentials how we call as a building potential that's a VBI here so right now everything is already under our estimation in the first several slide even we don't have this equation but uh, this equation is strongly prove that uh, our speculation is right. So the further based on this plot, so once we consider x equal to xn in this potential equation function, and therefore we can have this equation Okay, so that's just uh, put some like the the specific x on inside, and we will get this equation. Of course, we now we realize that uh, the key for this spin junction is actually related to this space charge region, and we will be interesting to know how this space charge width or sometimes we call it depression width what actually this what the factor actually can influence this space charge width or depression width so we starting from our previous uh, derived equation which tell us NAXP is equal to NDXN. So based this equation, we can have this one. And also we already know the building potential can be written as here. And therefore we can try to solve the XN and XP here. Since our goal is trying to understand this one, xp and xm here, we try to understand what would be the factors influence the xp, xp plus and the xm. And the total width here is xp plus xm here. So therefore, you can see this is the equation for xn, this is equation for xp here. And then the total depression width, that's uh, equal to xn plus xp, which is, can be written as uh, shown here, w is equal to so 
Now we realize our depletion ways is determined by our building potential. Also, is determined by our doping concentration in that N and P region as well. So now, if we consider some case, for example, if we consider as a P plus N junction, so that means we consider. The junction that have the heavily P type of doping, then the N doping, and what actually will change for our depletion width? So right now we have a higher concentration here. So that means our N A is higher. So once our N A is higher, this is higher, and that means our depletion width. Is reduced, right? So that's actually you don't have to remember the equations, but you have to understand once the doping change, how this doping will influence the depletion width, and therefore based on this equation, we can have the some sort of a conclusion here. If we consider as a P N junction, then if the P concentration of P is equal to the concentration of N, so that means S P. Will equal to x n, but right now, in reality, usually we don't have the exactly the same concentration of p and n for our real transistor. We actually have the case, like for example, p plus plus versus n and n plus plus. P versus N plus plus here. So in this case, if we consider the P plus plus versus N, so from the equation we can realize if this is a P plus plus, that means. The depletion region in the P side, which will be very narrow, so that means the X P is much smaller than X N, and also in the right case, P versus N plus plus. So that means our this one will be wider than this. So the X P will larger than X N. So that's actually more close to the reality case. We would see in the transistor. So if you still back to our MOSFET structure, so when I first time to learn the PN junction, I also get very confused at the how these things related to the transistor. But in the end, once you have the patience, until the End of this class with the MOSFET and BJT, and finally I realized that the, these are all the things try to help us to understand the MOSFET, understand the BJT. So that's why it's good to time to time to use the MOSFET as an example to understand the PN junction. 
So in the PN junction, as you may know, we have a P sub. We have the source and drain. But in most of case, because we want to reduce the source resistance, we want to reduce the drain resistance. Actually, we are using N plus plus. We are using the N plus plus here. So that's why I'm saying that in reality, this is a very non-practical case because nobody using like in this way. If you try to use this as an example, this will be exactly equal to the case like here. So that is exactly as a P versus N plus plus junction, which will be happen here. And just once we look at this, is a MOSFET, we have this one, we have the gate here right now even you don't start to look at the MOSFET you can imagine that the, how actually the depletion width inside this junction should be look like because this is N plus plus this is P so that means the depletion region inside this N plus plus is very small but however the depression region in the P is very wide here. So that's uh, this is uh, XP, this is XN. So XP will much larger. So this is XP and this is XN, XN so that's why the depression width here will be much larger than this one. But if this is typical transistor, that should doesn't make huge matters because of the, the depression region since doesn't uh, just formation of depression space charge region, right? But how this space charge region will influence our transistor operation. But now again, if you consider the basic physics of a PN junction tell us that this depression region is actually the region full of negative charge. Right? And because the P, this depression is very small, so we still have some holes here. But the problem is that the we have the electrons in the source. We have the N region here. We also have the N region here. Original, your channel length is here. Right now, because you have a depression region, so your channel length is become here. You have the electron, you have the negative charge, so that's why the electron from the source has a higher chance to reach to the drain side. This won't have any influence if we are considered a big device, if we will consider the long channel device. But if we are moving in the short channel device, we try to make like the like the below 22 nanometer, below 14 nanometer, this will get in smaller and smaller. And therefore, this will create the issues that we are not able to control the channel because the channel right now is dominated by this PN junction characteristic. So that's why people try to use some advanced design to avoid this PN junction to influence our channel operation. So in anyhow, just want to illustrate, we will talk about these issues later when we discuss the MOSFET, that's more related to what we generally call the short channel effect. But in here, I hope you guys can still get some sense that why this simple PN junction 
that's already give us a lot of issues that's already influenced lots of the device operations okay so maybe we can take a break because the later we will start to talk about under the different bias of our PN junction that actually will certainly increase or decrease of our barriers so we will be back in 10 minutes later
Okay, so <coughs> since we finished the the zero pi, so now we will be interesting to know, uh, in the case under the different bias, and in the typical, uh, uh, dial, that's uh, because the PN, P, uh, after the PN junction, we'll talk about the PN dial. So in the typical operation for dial, we can also try to understand the electrical characteristic using the typical IV. So in this case, if you look at for the IV characteristic, the current versus voltage, and we will be interested to know if we apply in this region what will be the band diagram look like so this is the region where we reply the reverse bias which is we uh, apply the negative bias in the p region and then the forward bias in the n region and usually in the pn dial the p region is a region we call as a anode and the n region is a region we call as a castle so that's a typical name for the p and n so in the reverse bias is actually we have the VA the and the the current in the anode versus the voltage in the anode. So this reverse bias means that we apply the negative of the VA. So that's why the the negative bias is here. Um in this case we will be interested first to understand what will be the band diagram change compared to the case like the zero bias here. So we, as usual, starting from the, the N and P, the bias, the, the band diagram in the N and P region. So in the P region, We have the conduction band. We have a valence band here. And we also have the intrinsic Fermi level EFI. That's uh, just in the middle of uh, EC and EV. So that's uh, EFI here. Um, right now, in the right hand side we also have to plot the conduction band and valence band so we have ec and ev here and also the intrinsic fermi energy is just uh, in the middle so that's a uh, EFI here and as you know the intrinsic Fermi energy or the conduction band and then the 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 valence band are the uh, same in the whole system but the only difference here is right now we since we apply the reverse bias our EFP this is our EFP and our EFN is not the same
Um, this is because right now it's not under the equilibrium case. This is a case under the reverse bias. So the difference between EFP and EFN that's exactly equal to our reverse bias here. So in the previous slide we have mentioned the VBI is equal to phi Fn plus phi Fp. But right now under the reverse bias our V total is equal to VBI plus the additional bias which is our reverse bias VR here which is the one show me here so this additional reverse bias will create a large band bending so if you try to connect the EC and EV you will find out that the band bending is larger than the previous equilibrium case this band bending is larger this band bending is larger and therefore if you look at from the span diagram to analyze the 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 building potential this is a uh, 5fp this is a uh, 5fn so the building voltage right now which is equal to v total is equal to vbi plus vr so we have the this one plus this one that's our vbi but now we have the additional vr here okay so this is exactly the same like shown in here so under reverse bias the main difference is increase potential barrier increase potential barrier and then the rest of it's exactly the same because right now the VBI is equal to the previous VBI but now we just replace the voltage not only the VBI with additional VR here so the depression width equation is the same the E max is the same but only difference is less additional bias in the uh, VR and that means once we increase our reverse bias our depression width is increased so that means under the the uh, reverse bias case actually the depression width is extended so original you might have the depression width probably like here but right now under the reverse bias your depression width
once your VR reverse bias increase your depression width is actually extended further so that can be understood from this equation as well and a, another thing need to understand is if you look at this band bending region the band bending is become larger so that means your electrons is getting higher difficult it's getting more difficult to move to the left right because the barrier high is increased and also it's more difficult to move to the right so that's why ideally in the reverse bias you actually increase the barrier high and that's create the the huge barrier for the electron and hole flow so that means in the ideal case under the reverse bias you should always have no current as long as if it's getting higher as large as bias you apply the barrier will increase further but the, your current will always stay in the very small especially should be close to the zero and there's no current flow under the reverse bias so in the based on the band diagram ideal case we can uh, imagine that uh, under reverse bias there's no carrier that be able to flow to the left and the right okay so that's a case related to reverse bias and next one we want to talk a little bit more about the capacitance here capacitance is uh, since related to the AC signal is related to the additional charge so right now what we discuss is once we apply the DC voltage and on top of DC we apply additional small AC voltage and this small ac voltage actually will create additional charge which is this the vr so right now if the dc voltage is uh, reverse bias vr and right now we have the additional ac voltage that become VR plus minus the VR so we will be interesting to know if we already reverse bias our PN junction but right now if we give additional AC reverse bias what happened to our reverse bias PN junction so in the reverse bias we can have the charge distributions as plot here so we can have which is positive and negative and this is positive xn and this is negative sp and we have a charge distribution and because we have this additional AC signal sometimes it's increased sometimes it's decreased 
at this increase, that means at this moment, our reverse bias is VR plus DVR. And this additional DVR will create additional charge here. So that's a DQ prime. That's because due to DVR. Also, to maintain the charge neutrality, this additional DQ prime also will induce additional minus DQ prime here. Right, so so far it's still very, very simple. This is not even related to the circuit. It's just a very simple electronics basic concept that the, once you have additional charge here, for sure you have even have the additional charge here. So a capacitance is associated with the PN junction due to a separation of the positive negative charge in the depletion region. So because we have a separate charge here and here. This separation charge will create the capacitance. And this is due to once we apply VR. And an increase in the reverse bias voltage dVR will also induce additional positive charge in the N region and additional negative charge in the P region. So that means this additional DVR will addi create additional DQ prime here and also additional DQ prime here. This is because at this moment, is apply VR plus DVR here and therefore this additional charge over DVR is equal to capacitance so that's a basic definition for the capacitance is a charge over voltage here and with once we have the additional charge over the voltage then that will create the capacitance and here we call the c prime that's we call the junction capacitance and the rest of the calculation is very simple just use what we already know so you have a dq prime will be equal to this and also the this one so this is uh, DXP, so DXP is here. This is DXN. And we also have this already known before, and therefore the C prime will be equal to this one. So therefore, we can also derive the equation for the junction capacitance as shown in here. And the purpose trying to have understand, try to understand the junction capacitance is because we want to use this capacitance to help us to analyze something. Before we go to analyze something, we also have to discuss a very specific case that's what we call the one-sided junction and this is a spatial PN junction called the one-sided junction this is under the case where our NA is much larger than ND and therefore our depression width xp is much smaller than xn so therefore this is a pn junction look like 
in this way where we have p plus plus versus n and because this is p plus plus therefore the depletion region here and depression region this is xp this is xn so right now na is much larger than nd xp will be much smaller than xn so the total depression width is equal to sp plus sn can be equal to xn only so that's why we call the one side junction what does it mean one side one side means that we only consider we consider depression region in the one side so that's why we call this as a one side junction here So in this case, we can still plot our charge distribution as shown in here. And because right now is everything's become the everything the, the W is become only consider the Xn. So we can also simplify this one. In the end, we have this is our junction capacitance. The right now if we try to manipulate this equation is become 1 over c squared that give us some additional advantage for the analysis because if you try to plot in this way which 1 over c squared versus our reverse bias and this will become a linear function which the slope is equal to 2 exon e exon s n d and the x intercept is equal to minus vbi here so now we can use this plot to help us to extract the building voltage and also the concentration nd so therefore this plot and this equation is very useful for us because right now, in reality, if you try to make the PN junction, like in this way, we have the P plus plus, and we will be interesting to want to understand the substrate concentration, which is N that's equal to ND. So what we need to do is we just need to create another p plus plus region that's usually by using the ion implantation and with this such structure it's very similar to this one so we can consider this is a one-sided junction here and once we have this structure what we need to do is just a measure junction capacitance and we try to plot 1 over C versus 
VR, and thus can help us to analyze the concentration here. So that's our purpose. That's why we have to introduce the relative complicated concept related to the junction capacitance. I believe if you were one, if you are in the slide, you're pretty confused. Why do we have to understand the junction capacitance? Because the goal is in this slide. We need to use this a one-sided junction, this kind of the spatial junction that help to analyze the doping concentration because sometimes in the uh, fabrication due to the semiconductor manufacturing of course we can get the doping concentration information from the vendor from the substrate provider but sometimes we cannot completely trust them we need to also have the way to electrical characterize by ourselves. And this is a way that very often used because the structure here is very simple. The measurement is simple. And then the plot is also very simple. But that can help us to confirm again for our doping concentration. Okay, so the next is we start to want to talk about some non idea characteristic in the PN junction. In the previous slide, we already mentioned in the PN junction or PN dial, what we are interested in is the IV curve, especially the anode current versus the anode voltage. This is something that we are interested in. And we also already analyzed by using the band diagram tell us that once we increase the reverse bias, it should have no current because the barrier high is increased and then the carrier cannot flow. And this idea, this case should be true for even very high reverse bias because the even high reverse bias, that means our barrier is getting higher and they should no current, right? But in reality, we found out that this is not the truth. Once we increase to the large enough, we start to see the current in the end. We start to have the current in the end to reach to very high current. At this point, this is something we call as a breakdown voltage. So this is something that we cannot explain by the band diagram. So that means there must be something else mechanism happen. So that's why we will discuss in this uh, uh, slide. So the reverse bias may not increase without limit. At some particular voltage, the reverse bias current will increase rapidly. The applied bias at this point is called as a breakdown voltage here. And there's a two reasons for this breakdown voltage. The first one is what we call the Zener effect. The Zener breakdown is occurs in the highly doped PN junction through a tunneling mechanism. So, in the case of the Zener dial, this Zener dial is a special case that we 
intentionally design a PN junction, which we both have the P plus plus, also the N plus plus, and in the middle of this junction interface, we can find out that for sure there is a depression width, but because this is highly doped, so the depression width cannot go very far. It's always very narrow because this is highly doped junction here. So in a highly doped junction, the conduction band and valence band on opposite side of the junction are sufficiently close during the reverse bias that electron may tunnel directly from valence band on the P side into a conduction band on the N side as shown in here because the depression width is very narrow and the electric field is very high so you will have the electron direct tunneling to the right and this will create the large linear current here so that's what we call the zener breakdown only happen in the p plus plus and n plus plus junction but however not only this effect also the uh average breakdown can be happen in the regular junction even without the p n uh, p plus plus or n plus plus so the average breakdown process occur when electron and holes move across the space charge region acquire sufficient energy from the electric field and then to create electron hole pairs by colliding with the electron with the depletion region so the idea is right now we have the electron will try to move here but actually the electron because it's under the very high reverse bias so the electron is uh, there's a, a very high electric field applied on this electron the electron will gain a lot of energy so the high energy electron the high energy electrons can break silicon bonding so once this high energy electron inject into our space charge region and break the second bonding at the meantime it will generate additional electron and hole pairs so right now you are getting additional holes and electron and this electron will break another silicon alter and create additional electron and holes so again so in the end you will have many electron and hole pairs and that's why we call this as a avalanche process This is because of the ones you have the high energy and electron inject into your depletion region and uh, this high energy electron will break the silicon and silicon bonding and that will create the additional electron and holes and this electron and holes will try to uh, break another silicon bonding again so this is like the the loop process that you will continue to generate 
more and more electron holes, and that's why we call this as a electron a average process. So the newly created electron hole move in the opposite direction due to electric field, and therefore create the reverse bias current. And the new generated electron holes may acquire sufficient energy to ionize other orders, leading to the avalanche process. So for most of PN junction, the dominant breakdown mechanism will be the avalanche effect. So that means even this is regular PN junction, regular doping in the P type and N type that still will actually have the average process in the end to have the average breakdown and we will start to see very high reverse leakage currents under the very high reverse bias and here's some additional analysis for the junction breakdown here so uh, usually we can consider our electron current versus initial electron current and has a correlation with uh, M which is a uh, multiplication factor so that means this is a factor to amplify our current and why this the current will be amplified that's because you have the additional electrons and whole pairs here so therefore the d i n x can be also rewritten as uh, here So this is because once the average process is happen, we create the additional electron and hole pairs at the same time. So we will create the additional electron current and hole current. So this is alpha n, this is alpha p, and where alpha n and alpha p are electron and hole ionization rate. This is because we create the electron and holes at the same time due to impulsation, and we can do some calculation. We assume the impulsation rate for the electron and holes are the same. Therefore, we can simplify this one, and in the end, we have this one. Once uh, these n factors approach to the infinity so that means this amplified uh, process is approached to the infinity because we are getting create lots of the electron hole pairs and each process will have the one tons of the this and but right now we have the many many times of this process so the angle will approach to the infinity here and therefore this gives the conclusion that the, when this uh, average will happen is the this one this is the average uh, breakdown voltage defined when the angle approach to infinity is here and in the end we can have this integration that means our imperialization rate integration between zero and end of the depletion width once it is equal to one and that's the case we will have the average process here so that's a the a further analysis for your reference but uh, the main understanding will be still focused on this one because this one is the one that we very often use in the all kinds of semiconductor but this 
integration is mainly used when you use a TK simulation, try to simulate the average breakdown, and then the computer, the software, will try to iteration this term until reach to one, and the TK software will define this is a point where we have the average process. And some of the special cases, uh, we also have some additional non-uniform double junction. That's just uh, for your information. It's not that uh, so important, but it's still nice to know because in some of the case, we really need this special case. So in some application, specific non-uniform doping are used to obtain spatial PN capacitor PN junction capacitor characteristic. For example, we might be interested in the linear gradient junction like in showing here. In this junction, we have the ND is a constant, but our NA is linear, depends on our uh junction deaths here so we have this uh spatial junction actually that people design to for the spatial application and the further analysis i will not do it again but just a very simple we still an analyze the charge you will apply the Poisson equation we do the integration in the end we can still have the electric field can be obtained so that's just for your information. Um, that's also the same, just the same more things like uh, uh, still people work on the spatial junction to derive the equation for the electric field and uh, for the potential distribution. And also we can use this to analyze the capacitance as well. So we can still have this equation and this is a one under the uniform doping. And also, there's a one uh, case, that's how we call the hyper absorbed junction. And this is a junction that uh, we have the different doping that can be shown in here. And doping is depends by the M as shown in here. So by using all of the previous knowledge, we can actually, it should be no problem for us to analyze this, just a matter with a calculation. So this is uh, when N is negative, and that's what we call as a hyper abrupt, abrupt junction. And this is uh, some specific name, that's what we call the varicose dials here. And if you are interested, you can look up what the application for this dial. But just want to let you know that uh, no matter what kind of the the, the junction uh, doping profile is based on our analysis for following from the charge distribution, we should be able to derive for the electric field, for the potential, and also in the end to calculate the junction capacitance. Okay, so that's uh, the end for our uh, this chapter. So uh, today we probably will finish our class earlier. And just one more thing, reminder, that's already, I think we already shown from the last time, but just reminder. So next. So we have the meter exam on the next Monday, 6.30 p.m. So we will be the same in this classroom. So if you are don't, if you are missing the class last time, you can watch the video later. That's I have certain basic explain that the, how we are going to run for exam. And this is just uh, another reminder. So yeah, it's a closed book exam. And we will provide the most important question. And 
the calc uh, uh, the parameters and the calculator is needed. So you need the calculator. You need the engineer. Engineering calculator is very important. Uh, that's all. So see you on next Monday morning. We still have the class, and then the evening we have the midterm exam, and we have the you need to submit the, your homework here, and also TA is already bring the 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 grading homework for the homework two and three, so he will put it here later, and then if you have any question, you feel free to check with TA. Okay, so we will end the class today and see you guys next week.